All right, guys, we're gonna make some delicious vegan meat today. Okay, we're gonna start off with a small can. This is about 400 grams of delicious chickpeas. And to this, we're gonna add some vegan milk. That's gonna help us puree it. And we're gonna add some pickling spices. Okay, I'm just gonna take off big pieces of cinnamon sticks here. There we go. Now you could also use Montreal steak spice, that'll work. And we're gonna add some salt. Now salt is really to taste. And that's it for now, I think. Maybe just a bit of fat. And this is really, I don't measure, but I would say maybe a tablespoon of fat. And we're just going to chop this up and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay guys, almost like when you're making a hummus. You want that nice and creamy. Now to this, we're going to add This is about half a cup of flour. We're gonna start off, yeah, we're gonna start off with one cup of vital wheat gluten and half a cup of white flour. And we're gonna mix this up in the food processor. You could definitely see that it is dry, so I'm going to add more milk. And we're going to blend this some more. check it there we go that's good for now okay that's what it looks like now I am going to put this on my board and add other stuff to it Now you're probably wondering why am I using flour? Um, it just keeps the meat a little whiter. Now if you want this to be just gluten and no flour, leave the flour out. I would say maybe add some chickpea flour to it. Uh, you want something that's going to be... Um, it's going to actually keep this as white as possible. Okay. 
Now at this point, uh, you can keep it in your food processor and add other ingredients to it and keep it all mixed. I want to keep mine as white as possible that when I do cut into it, it's going to be a nice colored, nice light colored meat. But otherwise, you can turn this into sausages. Uh, you can uh, cook it and make this a deli meat if you want. Uh, Again, whatever you want to put in this is perfect. Today, all you have to do is really search the internet and you'll find some sort of recipe that you can enjoy. I've got so many on my uh, YouTube channel. It really is easy to make a delicious vegan meat and it really, there's like no need to harm any animal. You're going to get all the protein you need in here. Like I said, I use the flour only because I want to keep this as light as possible. Uh, giving it more of a chicken uh, look. So I use the, the flour that hasn't been washed. It's just straight flour. But if you don't want to use that flour, uh, you can simply use uh, some uh, chickpea flour to this and it'll keep it uh, white also. Um, instead of chickpea, you can use tofu. There's so many ways you can make a vegan meat. Yeah, very easy. Okay, so I am going to cut these into cutlets and then I will be cooking them on the stove. Okay, here's my water. I'll show you what I'm going to use with my water today. Of course, I am going to add some black pepper. I think I have a bay leaf here, so I don't have to go out and get one. I do have a bay leaf. There we go. We're going to add a bay leaf to this. We are going to add some garlic. And I use it. I don't even take off the skin. go it does not make a difference to your meat uh, to this I am gonna add something that you probably might not have on hand but if you do get a chance and if you know a neighbor that has a fig tree ask him to give you a fig leaf I've got mine drying because I make tea with it. I also use them in soup. Delicious. That's a video that I'm going to make for you guys. Uh, very simple. You could use this almost like a parsley. Once it's dry like that, you could just rub it in. You could even put this in your meat if you want. Okay, so I'm going to get an onion. There we go. We've got some onion. I put the chunk of onion right into the water. You don't have to dice it or anything. And I'm going to get some paprika. Just a little bit of dark tamari. Okay, this is going to go on my stove. If you see you need more water just add a little extra water there I'm just gonna bring that to a boil and meanwhile we are going to stretch out some of this meat That's the shape I want them, so we can make like a cutlet. Throw them in sandwiches, you can cook them up in a pan. There's so many things you can do with it. And they don't have to all be the same size. There we go. want this to be a sacred piece of meat of course don't stretch don't roll it out as much 
Oh, that one broke. There we go. And this is going to be delicious vegan meat. You got protein from the chickpeas. You got protein from the vital wheat gluten. No different than eating meat. You get the same value. I would think more maybe. Now if you want this to be a redder meat, you can always add some, uh, I, would, I wouldn't say beet powder because you end up getting an ugly color, um, like a non-realistic color. If you're trying to go more for the realistic color, I would say uh, use a small piece of beet, first blend it up, turn it into like a liquid, and then add it to your to your uh, your mixture now I have um, lots of recipes out there where you could check that I do add the beets such as my brisket so there's lots of videos for you to check and like I said today there's so many videos out there I think everybody needs a look-see so, you know check around see what is easier um, I don't give measurements because I never cook that way but I give you an idea how to make meat that's so easy to make without even having to measure anything the worst thing for me is if you tell me measure a recipe that is not something I've ever done and it's always um, I always do it by feeling by eye and you know it doesn't really take much if you see your lick if your seitan mixture is too wet then add a little extra vital wheat gluten it'll fix that problem if you find it is uh, too dry add a little extra liquid I love using um, milk instead of water but I have used water so you know it's up to you sometimes I'm just too lazy to pull out the milk in the fridge and I have water in the kettle right next to me I end up using that uh, it depends on what you want to make guys. don't be afraid to try something new that's the best part and like I said this could be made into a roll you can make one big roll uh, and what you're gonna do of course instead of using plastic I used to use plastic now I stopped get some beautiful parchment paper roll that up and then encase that in aluminum paper and it keeps the shape a lot of people don't want to do it that way but then you tend to lose it if you're gonna use maybe some uh, cheesecloth nice and tight that'll hold the shape for you I've done that before with the brisket there's so many ways of really encasing your meat and um, you can make sausages like I said this is a simple recipe because I want it more like a chicken type meat but otherwise you could get really creative I have a beautiful deli meat that I promise I'm gonna give you the recipe I just need to have the time lately it's been hard even to work with I hurt my thumb and sometimes just opening up something it is so pa so painful <laughs> that it really I get so discouraged and I don't want to do anything but I'm gonna show you if you give me a second here my water is already boiling and I am gonna lower this because I will be adding my meat to it but for now I'm gonna continue doing this and I could add all my meat at the same time it will not stick now because I did add flour I might get more of a milkier liquid out of this but don't throw away that liquid you can always always make a gravy okay I'm gonna throw that right on top I need just a little extra flour here or it is gonna stick so I'm gonna have meat for a while and the best part is you can freeze this you can leave it in the fridge it depends how big your family is my family is a little smaller now. <laughs> you know if I have the girls coming to the country Erica's cabin um, 
I'll probably bring some of this so we can have up there. See, I'm cutting this, but if I tell you how painful it is for me, and this all happened because I thought I was a Xena warrior and using the axe, I was a little rough and I ended up hurting myself. So I am paying the price. Okay, I messed up that one too. Let's just put this back. A little flower. There's no mistakes. Everything's fixable. Okay, so there we go. And this is the last one. Okay. And that pickling, uh, that pickling spice I put in here is going to make a delicious, delicious, uh, oh, get back in there, um, piece of meat that's going to go in between bread. So this is great if you're making a nice panini with some fresh uh, garden tomato, a slice of this in there, some salad mayo. You could dress it how you like. It's perfect. And if you're going to grill it, this is perfect. So many things you could do with this. So I am going to add this to my water. And I'm just going to start dropping them. And just bring it up a little as you see that nothing is going to stick here I'm in your face with this camera I'm so sorry all right there you go notice how white the meat is so that'll give me more of a chicken looking meat rather than a dark meat that is why I added the flour. Like I said, you don't have to put flour. You could use uh, more protein by adding chickpea, uh, chickpea flour. Uh, you could even use fava flour. Uh, whatever can keep your meat as white as possible, just add, add that to your meat. I love the flour because it gives it a whole different texture, but that's my preference. So it really is up to you. And remember, what I added in my meat, you could add whatever ingredients you want. If you want to keep it light, you got to keep it light. Otherwise, if you start using a lot of other things in your meat, your meat will get dark. So I'm going to have this simmering, I'd say, for at least 60 minutes. And then I'm going to show you what it looks like once it's cooked. All right, guys. I'll see you in a bit. Okay guys, I did end up putting just a little bit of curry and I'll tell you why curry gives it that chicken, but very little. Don't put too much because then you got an Indian dish and if you want it to taste like chicken, you just want a tiny bit and a drizzle of olive oil. So there you go, my meat is cooking and as you could tell, nothing is sticking. Look at that. Okay, so I'm just going to let it cook one hour. I, it's not even two minutes in yet, but yes, I did add a little bit, a pinch of curry. And I added the olive oil. Like I said, I have such problems with my hands. Half the time, Erica's making dinner because I can't even cut a pepper if I have to. Sometimes it gets really, really bad. So I do have to apologize for the lack of videos. Not my intent, but things happen in life and it's not the end of the world. I'm trying to use my left more and more. But it's a stubborn old left hand. And it doesn't always want to do what it wants to do. Today my hand hurts. But it doesn't hurt as bad. Um, I have it taped up. So I'm able to do more. The tighter I tape it. I'm able to work with it. But then it also stops the blood circulation. Which then it starts hurting for other reasons. But... I'm going to do my best to make as many, video, as many videos as I can for you guys. So I'm going to say I love you. By the way, we're almost at 100,000. We need still some more people to get there. But I am so blessed to have all of you and to stick around and wait for this old lady to put her act together. And I'm going to say thank you. So I'll see you in a bit, guys. As soon as this meat is cooked, I forgot to put a timer. So I'll see you at 2 o'clock when this is 
done. So I'll see you in a bit. Okay, guys, as promised, it is almost two o'clock, and I'm gonna turn this off and I'll show you how white and beautiful my meat is. I might steam you up. I just might steam you up. Okay. Look at that. I just want to show you how beautiful and white this meat is. Look at that. Perfect little cutlets to fry up in your pan for sandwiches or just to have on the side of your plate. You can now season this in a pan. You can use this. Of course, you can. if you want to make minced meat, you could take some of these. Just put it through the food processor and let me see. Can I get closer? Hold on. Okay, a little better. I'm not so much in your face. Okay, so now you have all this meat. Everything's cooked. You have broth that you can turn into a nice gravy. So you can make maybe biscuits and gravy. Or you can just put the gravy back on your cutlet. Uh, you've got cutlets to throw in a sandwich. You could use it this way. Or you can season it up in a pan. That's up to you. You can have this plain. It's delicious. You could bread these and then fry them. These days I try not to uh, fry much of my my food if I don't have to. I know my husband doesn't care. But look how beautiful this meat. Now this meat is this color only because I use the flour in the recipe. Now... You can use other things, like I said, you can use chickpea flour, but it won't get as white as when you use flour in your meat. You know what? Half a cup of flour that I used went a long way. I made a lot of cutlets here. Now, this can be stored in the broth or outside the broth, or you can freeze them. Really up to you, and you can enjoy some delicious vegan meat. Okay, so I do want to fry one up for you just to show you. I am going to push this aside and turn on my oven. Okay, you got to forgive me. I'm very clumsy these days with my hand. Just a little bit. I wish I had something to hold this up. But I'm going to show you what this meat's going to look like. Okay, I'm going to put one in, and of course I'm going to use a little bit of Montreal Steak Spice. But you can do it any way you like. Okay, that's better. Okay, so now at this point you could dress it up any way you want. You could add some rosemary. I'm using Montreal Steak Spice. You can also use um, a little bit of soy sauce if you want. Oh, I can't get this open. I wanted to use my vegan Worcestershire sauce, but I can't use my hands. Oh, so touching. So I'm going to use just a little bit of soy sauce. Not too much. If you can see it, there we go. It's 
best to always cook it a little on low so this way you don't just scorch it and what it does is as you're cooking it slowly you also remove more uh, liquids out of the uh, cutlets so it gives you a firmer bite because it is there you go so I'm gonna say thank you for dropping by and thank you for all the patience waiting for me to put something up like I said I am having such a hard time with this hand I'm having a hard time holding this closed that's how much pressure it puts on my hand and Erica's not home she's on vacation she's at the cabin so i'm stuck doing this at home by myself these days and yeah i try to make whatever i can that's simple and i don't have to use my hand a lot because it really really hurts so i'm trying to use my left but it doesn't always work but there you go guys i hope you give this meat a try it's very easy very simple don't forget i did add a little bit of the um curry just a small pinch not too much because then you're going to go towards an indian dish but i did add a little curry and a little bit of olive oil in my in my water and it really does make a difference so i hope you give it a try come back let me know what you think and i'm going to say i love you guys and i'm going to see you in my next video